Hello, in this video I would like to talk about random experiments and the probability axioms. So, random experiment is a process by which we observe something uncertain. For example, uh, you toss a coin and you observe heads or tails. Because we don't know beforehand which one will appear, it's a random experiment. Or you may roll, roll a die and observe a number between 1 to 6. Or you observe a stock price of a company at some point in the future and again uh, because there is uncertainty involved, uh, this is a random experiment. An outcome is a result of a random experiment. For example, when you toss a coin, an outcome might be heads or tails. Or when you roll a die, uh, you know, the one outcome could be four, the one possible outcome. Or when you are observing a stock price, uh, your outcome might be a real number, of, I don't know, $53.22 or something like that. So, a sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. So in the case of tossing a coin, your sample space, which we usually show by set S, uh, has two elements, heads and tails. That's uh, the set of all possible outcomes. And in the case of rolling a die, your sample space is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And in the case of the stock price, your sample space S is, in theory, any positive real number. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to assign probabilities to events. For example, I might ask you, uh, I roll a die, and what is the probability of the event that I observe uh, an even number? So basically, when you roll a die, your outcome is one of these six uh, possible numbers, but I'm interested in the probability of the event that these uh, two, four, and six happen. So, and you might guess that the probability of this event is one half. Uh, so basically, what we want to do, we want to have events, an event is basically a subset of the sample space to which we assign probability, right? Uh, so, for example, in this case, if I define the event 2, 4, 6, the event that I observe uh, an even number, then I can write probability of this event uh, is equal to 1 over 2. Now, um, so what we want to say here is that, in fact, uh, an event occurs, an event E occurs, if the outcome of the random experiment belongs to E. So if I define this event E and I roll a die and then uh, the outcome uh, turns out to be 4, I say that event E has uh, occurred. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to assign probabilities to events. So probability is a function, in fact. It's a function that assigns to any event, let's say A, uh, you know, A is a subset of the sample space, so it's an event, so we, when we have an event, we want to talk about the probability of that event. It's a function, probability is a function that assigns a real value to subsets of the sample space. So we can say that P, P probability measure is a function from the set of all uh, events to uh, real numbers. Or in fact, probabilities are always between 0 and 1. Uh, so it's a function from the set of all possible events to real numbers between 0 and 1. So we want to talk about probability axioms. Now, probability axioms are some fundamental axioms that every probability measure must satisfy. Uh, and there is three of them. Uh, so if you have a probability, so, you suppose, so first of all, we have a sample space, right? We have a random experiment. We have a sample space. And on that sample space, we want to define a probability measure. That probability measure must satisfy these three axioms. First, probability of any event must be positive, any event A. Second, probability of the entire sample space must be equal to 1. And that's reasonable because uh, the outcome is always in the sample space. So this, the event, the sample space always happens, always occurs. The most interesting one is the third one, which says that for disjoint sets or disjoint events, because events are just sets, right? For disjoint uh, events, A1, A2, and so on, we will have probability of their union is a summation of their probabilities. Note that when you have two events, their union is also another event. Because it's a, they, when you have two subsets of the sample space, their union is also a subset of the sample space. So this is an event, so we can define a probability for it. Uh, and what it says is that if these events are disjoint, which means that uh, they don't have any element in common, then the probability is a summation of their, 
the probability of the reunion is the probability of the summation of the probabilities. So what it says that if these sets A1, A2 are disjoint, which means that you know they don't have any element in common, for example A1 and A2, then if I'm interested in the probability of the reunion, I just add the two probabilities. Okay? So these are very simple axioms, but it turns out uh, any uh, Basically, resulting probability theory is based on these axioms, so they are very important, and we need to be able to use them uh, to prove our results and obtain probabilities. So let's practice them. Uh, we will see more, uh, basically, examples later on how to find uh, probabilities for actual examples, but in this case, uh, for now, I will just want to practice these axioms by uh, using them to show some uh, properties of probabilities. So here is an example. Uh, so, and I suggest you to Stop the video, solve this example, uh, and then uh, watch the rest. Okay, so let's uh, solve uh, this example. Now, what we want to do is that we want to use a probability axiom to, sh to obtain uh, these uh, probabilities. First, we are asked to find probability of a complement. So a complement, remember, what was a complement? It's a set of whatever that is in sample space but is not in A. So a complement here is the shaded region. Now, what we can say is that uh, A union A complement is equal to the, the entire sample space, right? It's just by the definition of the complement. So we can write that probability of the sample space is equal to probability of A union A complement. But what is probability of A uh, sample space is equal to 1. This is because uh, the, first ax uh, the second axiom, so axiom 2, says that this is equal to 1. So 1 is equal to this probability, but note that A and A complement are disjoint. So the probability of the reunion is the summation of their probabilities uh, by the third axiom of probability. And that's all we wanted to show, because here 1 equals PA plus PA of A complement, so PA complement is 1 minus probability of A. So the second item here is, what is probability of the empty set, right? Probability of the empty set, well, we can use the previous part. We know that the empty set is basically the complement of the sample space. So probability of the empty set is probability of the sample space complement, which is by this is 1 minus probability of the sample space. But probability of the entire sample space is equal to 1, and this is by axiom 2 and this is equal to 0. So the probability of the empty set is equal to 0, and that's what we expect, right? The empty set does not have any elements, so whenever you uh, perform the random experiment, uh, one outcome ha uh, occurs, uh, which does not belong to the empty, uh, empty set, so the probability of the empty set must be 0. Okay, now let's look at the next uh, item. We want to show probability of any event is less than or equal to uh, 1. So how do we prove that? Well, uh, what we can do here is, uh, to, uh, for any event A, we can write uh, that probability of A is equal to 1 minus probability of A complement, right? That's what we proved in the first item. And because this is positive, or at least it's larger than or equal to 0, probability is neg not negative uh, by the first axiom of probability, so we conclude that probability of A must be less than or equal to 1. 1 minus some positive value, so it's less than or equal to 1. And let's look at the next one. Next one is asking us to prove that probability of A minus B is probability of A minus probability of A intersection with B. You know, in these problems, it's usually useful uh, to look at the Venn diagram. So if this is A, this is B, we are interested in probability of A minus B. So what we can do, we can say, okay, so this part is A minus B, and let's say this part is A intersection with B, right? Note that these two sets are disjoint. So by uh, the third axiom, we conclude that the probability of their union, probability of A minus B union A intersection with B is equal to the summation of their probabilities. But what is their union? Well, the union of these two is basically the whole A. So this is probability of A. Probability of A is equal to probability of A minus B plus probability of A intersection with B. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. If you just move probability of A and B to the 
uh, other side. Note that instead of probability of A intersection with B, I usually say probability of A and B. These are the same thing. Remember in the last video we discussed that intersection is the same as and. But when we say the event A intersection with B occurs if A happens and B happens because you know, any element that belongs to the intersection must belong to A and B. So sometimes instead of writing probability of uh, A intersection with B, we write probability of A and B. And sometimes you write it as like probability of A comma B. Comma also means and. Okay, so now let's look at the next part. We want to show this. Again, how do we prove this? Well, one way of proving this is to note that uh, probability of A minus probability of intersection and by the previous part, this is probability of A minus B, right? So it suffices to show, we show probability of A union B is equal to probability of B plus probability of A minus B, right? Now, if you show this, we, we are done. Again, look at the Venn diagram. Uh, again, if this is A, this is B, now, what is B? B is this. What is A minus B? A minus B is this part. Now, again, these two sets are disjoint, right? And the union is basically A union B. So, we can write that probability of B union A minus B is equal to probability of B plus probability of A minus B because they are disjoint, axiom 3. And this union is A union B, right? B union A minus B is the whole uh, A union B, and that's exactly what we wanted to show. So we prove this, which means this. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, last part. We want to prove that if A is a subset of B, then the probability of A is less than or equal to probability of B. So how do we show this? Well, uh, again, if you look at the Venn diagram, it's a good idea to do that. Uh, if this is B, then we know that A is a subset of B, right? So what we can do, we can write that probability of B is equal to probability of, you know, look at these two sets. This is B minus A. Again, these two are disjoint, and their union is equal to B, so probability of their union is equal to the summation of their probability. So it's equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus A. And note that here, probability of A, and this is positive by the first axiom of probability, plus, so probability of A plus a positive number becomes probability of B, so we conclude that probability of A must be less than or equal to P of probability of B. So these were, uh, in some sense, uh, theoretical exercises. Uh, in, in the next video, start, we start talk, uh, solving some practice examples, uh, and we see how we can use these rules to solve uh, probability problems. Okay, thank you.